All right, welcome to Geometry 12 dash, sorry, 8 dash 3. Uh, we're looking at inscribed angles in this section. So, first, I'm going to start off with just the definition of what is an inscribed angle. And inscribed angle is going to be, you can write this in your book, an angle whose vertex. is on the circle and whose side sorry and whose sides are chords of the circle let's go through that again so an inscribed angle is an angle okay so it's an angle whose vertex so the vertex remember here's an angle okay and its vertex, C, is on the circle. So you can see that C ends on the circle here. And uh, the sides are chords. So remember, a chord is uh, a segment that has its, its endpoints on the, on the circle as well. So its two sides are chords, and its vertex hits the side. That's it. Um, the intercepted arc I've highlighted in blue. An intercepted arc is an arc with endpoints, so A and B, right, uh, that are on the sides of the inscribed angle and the other points in the interior. Basically, an inscribed angle, the arc formed by the, by the end of the chord segments, uh, is your intercepted arc. All right, let's move on. Theorem 12.11, ins uh, the inscribed angle theorem. The measure of an inscribed angle, the measure of an inscribed angle, is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Now, we just talked about these two words. Let's look at what we're talking about. So, the measure of an inscribed angle, so let's say that this inscribed angle C here is 40 degrees. Guess how many degrees this intercepted arc will be? Remember, the intercepted arc is formed in between the endpoints. Uh, it'll be half. I'm oh, sorry, this will be half of the arc. So, the measure of the angle is half of the measure of the arc. So, if the arc is 80 degrees, then the measure is only going to be 40 because it's half of it. If the arc is 100 degrees, then this is only going to be 50, because it's half of it. So the measure of angle B, oh, sorry, this is, I have my letters wrong. I have to fix that. If angle B, we'll make this C. So the measure of angle B is going to be half of the measure of, of AC. All right, so now let's use that to solve what are the values of A and B. So first, let's look at A. So here's A, and you can see that we have endpoints um, formed from an inscribed angle. So angle P, Q, T, right? P, Q, T is endpoints. Let me use a different color here. These endpoints here make this arc. And this arc will be twice as much as this, right? So if this is 60, 60 needs to be half of what this angle is, meaning A would be double that or A degrees would be 120 degrees. It would just be A is 120 degrees. Let's look at B. How do we find B? Well, B, let me use a different color here now. B is going to be half of this arc, right? Because that's the inscribed angle. That's the core that the inscribed angle makes, or the, the arc that the inscribed angle makes. So how long... How many degrees is this? Well, it's 30 for this segment plus 120, meaning this is going to be 150 for the whole, the whole thing is 150. And half of 150 is what B would be. So B is going to be 75 degrees. That easy. All right, let's move on. Okay, uh, we have three corollaries to theorem 1211, um, which is the inscribed angle theorem. So first, so first says... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Here we are. Two inscribed angles that intercepts the same arc are, let me write this in, let me use black again, congruent. And let's look to an example of what I'm talking about here. So if we have two inscribed angles, so we have this purple one, which I have it labeled, and the pink one, right? If they intercept the same arc, right? 
then the measure of these two angles will be congruent. Which would make sense, right? Because however many degrees this arc is, half of that will be how much this is, and half of that will be how much this is, meaning these two will be exactly the same. Let's look at the next one. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right triangle. So a semicircle, uh, the diameter has to, well, it has to pass through the origin. So the side of the triangle has to be at the diameter. And now, if you covered up this half, you have a semicircle. So if that's true, then the triangle formed would be a right triangle. Let me just show you. Um, so even if we kept the same diameter here, and I try to form a different triangle, like here, you could still see it's going to be 90 degrees. So any triangle formed, if I kept the same one and I tried to do it here, 90 degrees. So any uh, an angle inscribed by a semicircle is going to be a, a right angle. Okay, and lastly, the opposite angles, the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed are supplementary. Do you remember what supplementary means? Uh, so opposite could be, I don't label these, yeah. opposite could be here and here. I shouldn't read that hash mark. Close to what see. So here and here. Um, and I don't mean these to be equivalent. I just want to identify that they're different. I'll just use orange. Okay. And what this says is that this angle and this angle are supplementary, meaning they'll add to be 180 degrees. So if this was 100, then this one would be 80 because I know that they're supplementary. If this one was 90, well, it's not 90. If this one was... 70, this angle would be 110 because they're supplementary and they need to add to 180 degrees. All right, let's move on. So using those corollaries, we have a question. Uh, what is the measure of each numbered angle? So here's our first one, 1, right? And what is this? Well, you can see that 1 is formed by an angle, uh, an angle that's it's inscribed by um, a semicircle. Sorry, a semicircle. So that means that 1 must be 90 degrees. So angle 1 is 90 degrees. That was from corollary 2. How do we figure out angle 2? Hmm. Well, if we look carefully, we can see that angle 2 forms this arc. That inscribed angle forms this arc. And guess what also does? This angle does. This also forms the same arc. And we know that uh, if two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. So angle 2 must also be 38 degrees. Pizza pie. Theorem 1212. 12. This states, the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord. So, let's, so the measure of an angle formed by a tangent, so remember, a tangent and a chord is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So whatever, uh, however many degrees this angle is right here, of angle B, C, well, I didn't have another point here, but this angle will be half the size of however many degrees this arc is here. If we went the other way, however many degrees this is, is formed by a chord and a tangent. However many degrees this is, it's going to be half of the arc present here. So let's look at a problem. In the diagram to the left, SR is a tangent, so here's our tangent, um, to the circle at point Q, uh, and here's a chord, PQ, right? So we know that, um, well, let's see, if PMQ, so PMQ, so if this whole arc here is 212 degrees, can we figure out what PQR is? Well, okay, so if this is 212, that means that this angle here, that this angle will be half of 212. So we know that um, the measure of angle PQS would be 106, because it would be half of 212. Now we know that SR is a line, and that all straight lines have 180 degrees. So 180 degrees subtracted from, and we're looking for the supplement here, right? The supplement is what we're trying to find. What is the measure of, of PQR? So PQR will be the supplement to 106. So 180 minus 106 will give us what we're looking for, 
and that is 74 degrees equals the measure of angle PQR. Easy as that. Okay, good luck on your bookwork, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, bye.